The movement was begun by a scientist who discovered, quite by accident, the signals being sent. Please understand, they are safe as long as they are not discovered. They want their weapon. Look out for Charlie. Oh, I don't want that son of a bitch dead. I want him dead. I want to talk about a couple more cases that involve radio frequency attacks on people. I plan on going deeper into these people later, but I just want to get this out and kind of put the information out there that these weren't just people losing their minds, you know, these were people that were attacked. You know, it always starts with the walls, and it does. If you go through these case after case after case, every single time, it begins with the walls. And why is that? One, you have electrical wiring, 60 hertz electrical wiring going through your walls. Secondly, the sound always sounds as though it's coming from the walls, another room, or another place. Even with quote unquote ghosts, people will hear these ghosts, you know, down in the basement or up in the attic, and they'll get down there or up there. And the voices won't be there when you get up there it will sound like it's coming from somewhere else it's typical it always sounds like it's far away either it sounds like it's far away or it's directly in the person's melon and they can't get away from it so if they're in the middle of their living room it's coming you know from six to eight feet away from them and sounds like somebody hit a like a baby monitor on low volume it has uh, a very weird sound to it. Going back, here is uh, Aaron Alexis, who was the naval yard shooter. His began with the walls. The attack, which ended with Alexis shot dead by a police officer, came one month after he complained to police in Rhode Island that people were talking to him through the walls and ceilings of his hotel room and sending microwave vibrations into his body to deprive him of sleep. His shotgun, which was purchased two days before the shooting from a gun shop in Virginia, was etched with the messages including my ELF weapon, an apparent reference to extremely low frequency waves, and end to the torment. So, you know, it always starts with the walls, every single time. Same with James Holmes. It's just very, very peculiar, we'll say. A lot of these recordings that people have sent to me over the years that I've analyzed sound just like that. Like like it's coming from a, the wall or another place or out in the driveway even or another room. It doesn't have a whole lot of high end. It doesn't have a whole lot of high mid. And it's intended that way. And it bounces off the sinuses and the inner ears of these people and creates these symptoms. So here we have Mark David Chapman. And if you don't know, Mark David Chapman is the guy that killed John Lennon. He shot John Lennon. And there have been a lot of uh, mainstream theories about how he was MK ultra to do this. You know, they said that they used Catcher in the Rye to train him. And then when he would see the book or read the book, he would kill. I mean, a lot of stuff that, to me, sounded pretty ridiculous. Like, I couldn't. I couldn't fathom and like I've talked a lot about before it's not mind control it's manipulation in fact they uh, South Park had butters going kill John Lennon like he was going to go kill John Lennon he was programmed like a zombie to do it but that's not how it's done it's through manipulation so I was doing a little bit of research on Chapman and I've done research on him in the past but you know, it's hard to find real information. So, I found some quotes and I copied and pasted them to one file. You have to remember that Chapman did change his story a little bit after the year 2000 when he was up for parole. Alright, so things changed when he was up for parole that hadn't been changed ever before that. And he had had this going on for a long time. It would come and go. And... Coincidentally, this was right after who? David Berkowitz. So, he was using a 38 caliber revolver, just like David Berkowitz. And by his own account, a small voice in his head was telling him to kill. 
And later he said there was a small voice. He called it a small voice telling him to do it, do it, do it. Okay, so here Chapman went on a trip around far eastern countries. He began a relationship with a travel agent, a Japanese-American woman named Gloria Abe. They married on the 2nd of June, 1979. So he wasn't so insane that he couldn't get a wife or, you know, have a relationship with somebody. He started work as a solitary printer, but left after arguing with his hospital employers. He developed obsessions, like uh, thought loops, and got into debt. He later said that he started to hear voices of the little people again around this time. Now, the little people that he's referring to were a group of people who lived where? In Mark David Chapman's walls. This wasn't some fantasy that he made up. This was legitimate. Because I looked, it said later he started to hear the voices of the little people again. And I was like, well, he must have heard them a first time. And then I went up through the article through the article thinking that I missed something and never found that so it doesn't mention that but he began to hear the voices of the little people again around this time in September 1980 he wrote a letter to a friend Linda Irish saying I'm going nuts signed the catcher in the rye what do we have here we have a guy who is pretty into the Beatles a guy that was being targeted with RF weapons and what did they do here? They created a Manchurian. They didn't create a Manchurian with the Catcher in the Rye book. They created a Manchurian with these voices calling him Mr. President and calling him all these different names, pretending that they were a group of people that lived in the walls. So let's keep going here. Following the murder, Chapman underwent dozens of assessments by different psychiatrists. He described his anger toward his father, who had regularly abused his mother, his identification with Holden Caulfield, and with Dorothy of the Wizard of Oz, and his conferences with the little people, and they call it an imaginary set of people with whom he'd interacted and from whom he took guidance. These weren't imaginary. These were a group of voices that he was talking to. He also provided a list of other celebrities he thought about killing. How many times does this have to happen over and over until people realize that it all starts with the walls? Why is that? You know, it's just ridiculous that people aren't putting this together. Chapman later told journalist Jack Jones that he had told his little people he intended to go to New York and kill John Lennon, and they begged him not to, saying, Please, think of your wife. Please, Mr. President, think of your mother. Think of yourself. Chapman says he told them his mind was made up and that their reaction was silence. Hmm, strange, right? So, Mark David Chapman had a council of little people that he spoke to that he believed were coming from the walls. And then the media took this and twisted it into different things to try and paint it out as some sort of fantasy land for a crazed killer. This is just like Nathan Gale. This is just like Aaron Alexis. This is just like every other case. Which brings me to John DuPont. John DuPont was rich, very rich. He came from the DuPont family. I don't know a whole lot about the DuPont family. But I do know quite a bit about John DuPont. And I did a lot of research on him some years ago. And what happened was John DuPont became like obsessed with wrestling and sports and particular athletes in general. And he kind of had a weird childhood and he wasn't, uh, it, it seems like he missed out on like brotherhood and camaraderie. And he wanted that camaraderie. So he would let these athletes come and live on his property and pay them to live there. He built this whole gym and he really was trying to put together his own family. That's what happened. And somebody wanted to get rid of the DuPont legacy. They wanted to end it. And John DuPont was like, you know, one of the last. So what happened was 
John DuPont was especially taken by this guy. He, he really liked him. This guy's name was J Dave Schultz. And Dave Schultz is clearly a German descent last name. I don't believe he was Jewish German. I believe he was of German descent. There's, you know, there's two different kinds. So what happened was Dave Schultz was a, a good friend of John DuPont and liked him very much. He let Dave Schultz live there. And over this period of time, John DuPont became targeted with these weapons. And where did it start? It started with the walls. He thought people were literally living and coming into his walls. He thought there was a tunnel built that was allowing people to get into his house and into his walls without people seeing. Now, what is that? That is not insane. That is a rational thinking person trying to figure out why they were experiencing these weird things. He could have easily gone to ghosts and phantoms and ghouls and goblins living within his walls, but he didn't. He went to, somebody has to be getting into my house somehow. And eventually, these voices that all these people go through convinced him that who was doing it. They convinced him that Dave Schultz was doing it. This is a Manchurian test. And this went on for a long time. John DuPont hired backhoes to come in and dig up around his property looking for the tunnels because he had the means and he had the money. So when that wasn't found, things started spiraling further and further out. And John DuPont ended up killing Dave Schultz. Now, was John DuPont just some guy that lost his mind in his 50s or 60s? Absolutely not. This was a, an operation to drive this guy nuts and push him to the brink. And they pointed him through not mind control, but mind manipulation to blame Dave Schultz for this. And he killed Dave Schultz. That's how this happened. I'm going to go further into both of these cases. I just wanted to bring them to the, to the attention of people and let them know that here is yet another two cases in pop culture history where this weapon was used and it wasn't due to mental illness it was due to people not liking John Lennon people wanting to get rid of John Lennon and saying hey why don't we test this out we have this newer technology let's test it out and see if we can get this guy manipulate him to kill John Lennon and with this guy John DuPont we, we want his fortune. We want him taken off the map. Let's see if we can get him to commit a murder. He's expendable to us. And we're getting two birds with one stone here. That's how they're looking at it. And that's what happened with these people. These guys were victims. All of them were victims of this technology. John Lennon was a victim of this technology. Mark Chapman was a victim of this technology. John DuPont was a victim of this technology, and Dave Schultz was a victim of this technology. So you have four victims in two cases. And there, there's more. Then you have the whole family, the whole family of Dave Schultz and, and John DuPont and the people around him. Everybody is affected by this. And then it's blamed on uh, mental illness or drugs or whatever. It's ridiculous. But I'll get into it further later, but these are cases that you guys should be looking at and realizing what was really going on here. They didn't like take Mark David Chapman to some spooky warehouse when he was drugged and then implant thoughts in his head by hypnotizing him. They haven't needed to do anything like that for years. And that is what they were doing with the MK Ultra tests with psychic driving. Now, it wasn't wireless. They were knocking these people out. And then they were feeding these thoughts to them over and over through tape recorded messages a la psychic driving. And what this was doing was giving them information on how to more effectively use these radio frequency weapons. So John DuPont and Mark David Chapman are just two more people that you can add to the list of people that have been affected by these weapons in pop culture. And... Before I go, turn off your YouTube 
automatically playing the next video turn that off because what you're inadvertently doing is you're giving these like CNN and you're giving these other people hits it counts as a view as soon as it goes there and if you turn that stuff off then they don't get the views so I always make it a habit to turn my uh, automatic play button off as soon as I start using YouTube or anything like that and also uh, the website and the forum is up and running again the database was corrupted and we are rebuilding that database on the forum and also the secure connection that had plagued us for a long time has been fixed as well so that's it look out for Charlie